My name's Hans Schlosser. Um, I used to play in a band called Mushmouth. On Triple Crown Records now, I drive for bands. And this is a story of how music saved my life. Well, I basically started playing like when I was 13. Signed my first record deal when I was 19 with a band called Anthrophobia. And then I joined a band called Mushmouth, put out two records on Triple Crown Records. And we changed the name of the band to Out to Win on Triple Crown. And I also played in a band called In Ruins on Metal Blade. And two years ago, I started driving bands. You know, I've been listening to a lot of country lately, which is kind of weird. I listen to a lot of rap. I listen to everything, you know. Um, you know, I mean, I have, I like heavier music. That's, that's my thing. But, you know, I've been listening to a lot of, like, ambient stuff. Just very relaxing stuff, you know. Because, I mean, people view driving as um, a lot of responsibility, which I know it is. But the more, you know, I'm, I'm a very chill person, very relaxed to begin with. So... You know, some music that relaxes me. I drove Silverstein in the beginning of the year. Um, they toured with August Burns Red. I was home for about a month, and um, before going out with Kitty, driving them. About two weeks into my layover, my my off time, my mother called me and said, I, "I knew there was something definitely wrong with just the panic in her voice." She said, "You have to get home immediately. Your father just shot himself." So I was literally like four or five blocks away. My friends drove me to my parents' house. And what I saw was my father being taken out of the apartment in which I used to live. I mean, he shot himself in the face right here. So he was covered in blood and I was just, I mean, I just saw him a day or two before that. We went out to dinner, my mom, my dad and me, and I, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. So we went to the hospital, and the the doctor said that they can do... He was responding to every command, like, raise your right hand, he was doing that. You know, and that they could probably save his life with the surgery. They, um, they ended up doing the surgery, and my mom and I were waiting, and... Um, they basically came and said, your father is not going to make it. The surgery didn't turn out the way we wanted it to. And I said, look, I want to get in there and see my fucking father right now. And what I saw from here down was my father. But from here up, it was the most horrifying thing I could possibly... Um, it was horrible. I mean, his tongue was out to here... He had no eye. I just, I don't know, I just couldn't believe what I was looking at. And they said, look, you know, we're going to, you have a choice. There's no quality of life. Do you want us to pull the, um, the life support off? And we said yes. And the thing that was really bad was after they took the life support off, it took like a day for him to die. So my mother and I were basically sitting by his bedside and I was afraid to even just go get anything to drink or anything to eat because I wanted to be there when he died. And, you know, I don't know, like, you know, I don't know what the worst thing is. It's like my mom calling me, the panic in her voice, seeing my father right after he did it seeing my father in the hospital or my mother looking at me and saying we have been cheated you know I have no idea why you know he did it he was totally against suicide I didn't even know he had a gun and you know I mean I, I've had my time to grieve about it you know and especially with driving you have a lot of time by myself to think about it it's just very confusing to me you know like why he he did it there's a lot of unanswered questions and hopefully for with me saying my story it's helping me talk about it if I can help someone just one person that is depressed there's always help out there no matter what the problem is if, no matter what the problem is there's always somebody out there that can give some sort of guidance to help you you know what I mean and 
what people don't realize is the people that you leave behind if you do do that act that's that's the most horrifying thing because there's people out there that care about you even if you don't think there are there are and it's just you know i mean i've grieved and actually today i was even thinking about it and today i cried you know and it's like the crying's become less and less and less frequent but it just sucks i mean it was my my dad was my best friend and he was my hero what I'm